In my last video, my mom, who by the way is not into tech at all, built her first PC while I was giving her instructions blindfolded. It was, <laughs> well. Huh? Do I do it from the inside or that? Yeah, from the inside. Oh. I got it. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Uh, so, oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty frustrating and it took nearly two hours, but she did it. And the computer built, which we have since named Hackin' Mama, booted on the first try. And it really, to me, just highlights the fact that building a PC isn't hard, even for people who have no clue what they're doing and have never done it before. The best part? Well, now we've got Hackin' Mama running Mac OS and oh, wow. I mean, I knew that this computer was going to perform well, but I did not expect it to perform this well. This video is sponsored by Dashlane, the best all-in-one service that will keep you safe online. To learn more, visit the link below. All right, so a quick refresh on the hardware. This machine is rocking an Intel i7-8700K. Yeah, I know. I knew it was gonna happen when I started planning this video, okay. We've got an Aura Z370 Gaming 7 motherboard, which is incredible for easy overclocking. Uh, we've also got an AMD RX 570 that I got used on Craigslist for $90. Not shabby pricing. But what makes this card great is that it's natively supported in macOS Mojave, so no driver installation, none of that. And it's even utilized for hardware acceleration in Final Cut Pro, which is awesome. What else have we got? Oh, we've got two 3000 megahertz, 16 gigabyte DDR4 memory DIMMs that are overclocked just a tad, bringing us to a total of 32 gigs of 3200 megahertz brain butter. And then we've got some loose bits and ends like a Samsung 950 Pro NVMe SSD, which is discontinued, but still works really great. We've got a Thermaltake Water Water3 AIO liquid cooled CPU uh, cooler. I guess that's what they're called. <laughs> We've got an overkill EVGA 750 watt P2 Platinum power supply. And then all of that hardware is housed inside a Fantex Enthu Pro M case. So the total build cost is just shy of $1,400. Not cheap, but it's a killer value as you are soon to find out. But first we've got to install macOS. Installing macOS on a PC has gotten remarkably easy in the last few years. And while it used to be a big hassle to not only set up a Hackintosh for the first time, but maintain it long-term, you had to be careful with certain updates, you couldn't use certain apps, it was truly a disaster. That's really no longer the case. Pretty much any hardware can be Hackintoshed, but some don't really work all that great. It comes down to your motherboard. For example, a few motherboards don't have compatible audio controllers and so you have to buy additional hardware, like a USB DAC or PCIe sound card to get sound working on your machine at all. Obviously not ideal. Other motherboards can work pretty well with, you don't need any extra hardware, but you're going to need to spend 25 to 30 minutes of software tweaking, fixing some stuff upon first setup. Also probably not ideal. But many modern motherboards, like the one I used in Hackin' Mama, are basically plug and play and install as a real Mac would. Now you will have to set up a Hackintosh friendly Mac OS Mojave installer, and there are dozens of excellent tutorials online that tell you how to do this on both a Mac and PC. I'll link those below. I was able to boot into the standard Mac OS Mojave installer, format my Samsung SSD as an APFS drive with disk utility, and then install Mac OS. Once the installer was done, I went through the first time setup process as I would with any other new Mac, and without having to do anything, nothing, almost everything works. I can download and install apps from the Mac App Store. I can listen to my content and watch my content that I purchased on iTunes. And all of my iCloud services work, including contacts, calendars, iMessage is a big one, browser syncing, and it even shows up on Find My Mac, which is pretty funny. The one exception is AirDrop and, well, Handoff, which I never can get to work on even a real Mac. But that's only because my motherboard doesn't have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth built in. Now, if you spend $30 on a Wi-Fi Bluetooth compatible adapter with Mac OS, and they are seriously $30 on eBay, problem solved. You can use AirDrop and Handoff and whatever other Wi-Fi Bluetooth features you want. I just didn't really see the need in this build for myself. So if it functions like a Mac, and it looks like a Mac, and it swims like a Mac, and it quacks like a Mac, then it's probably a Mac. But you might be thinking, okay, well, um, but it's not a duck, and it doesn't look like a Mac. 
And you're right, it doesn't. This is a full tower ATX case. Now I could have jammed all of this hardware into a significantly smaller case. And in fact, that's exactly what I did last year with a separate Hackintosh build. In fact, the build had no fans at all and it looked incredible. But there are two huge advantages to Hack and Mama's larger size. Number one, the machine is dead silent, even under full load. Yeah, way quieter than a real Mac, which you think you thought was quiet. And number two, we can overclock the ever living crap out of this hardware because unlike Apple machines, this computer actually has cooling capacity. And thus overclock we shall henceforth. I don't know what that was, but we're going to push the 3.7 gigahertz hexacore CPU all the way to five gigahertz. I actually did this with the motherboard's one touch overclock feature and it works great, but it's probably applying a little bit more CPU voltage than necessary. And I may even be able to go beyond five gigahertz if I were to choose to overclock it by hand. But for now, this will do just fine. Once I boot back into Mac OS, oh, oh, oh baby, does this thing purr. In synthetic benchmarks, it does not underwhelm. In Geekbench, Hack and Mama scores a nearly 6,700 single core score, which is 15% higher than Apple's best performing Mac, the 2017 27 inch iMac. Kind of unsurprising, seeing as though that that computer packs the 7700K, which is the predecessor to the 8700K in Hack and Mama. But what is surprising is the multi core score. 32,732, which smashes Apple's top of the line consumer iMac by over 40%. But what's more impressive is that it outperforms the base model iMac Pro. Yeah, the $5,000 one, that one. And not just barely, by over 7% in multi-core loads. In Cinebench, the story continues with the base model iMac Pro just barely outperforming Hack and Mama. And actually the GPU, that RX 570, performs really well using Apple's Metal API in GPU benchmarks, even outperforming the Vega 56 in my iMac Pro. Now I'm guessing that this is due to thermal headroom because the card is not as good, in theory, at least according to the spec sheet, as the Vega 56 in my iMac Pro. But this has air and that does not. I can already see some of you trying to get out of your chair and punch your monitor saying quit, but synthetic benchmarks don't mean phooey. How about real world performance? Well, using my new Red Raw 4K to ProRes 222 Final Cut Pro 10 4K export, that's quite a mouthful, but a very realistic video editing workflow, iMac and Hack and Mama both complete the benchmark in one minute, 18 seconds, near exactly the same time for both machines. So as you can tell, Hack and Mama is really good at being, well, a Mac. It also happens to be a much better Windows gaming PC too. <laughs> Now, yes, I know, Apple fanboys are going to shout, but the 5K display! And they're right. Apple's panel used an iMac and iMac Pro, it's fantastic. But there are other options like this BenQ EW3270U that in my opinion has richer colors, is five inches bigger, supports HDR content in Mac OS, which the iMac display doesn't even do, and it's only 600 bucks. But it is only 4K. If you need 5K, and I know some of you won't believe this, but there really are people out there that do need 5K. You actually can swap out this motherboard for a Thunderbolt compatible one, and then just use the LG Ultrafine 5K, which Apple sells and is the same panel that is in the iMac and iMac Pro. So you get that monitor, a fully modular PC Hackintosh, and you have an extra $2,000 in your pocket. Oh, and you outperform the base model iMac Pro. Sure, this machine is not as sexy nor as petite as Apple's machines. And I mean, look, it's, it's a Hackintosh. Even though they are excellent nowadays, they're still not as bulletproof as a real Mac. But this machine is upgradable and it's serviceable and it's adaptable and it's quiet and it's cool. Both machines have their advantages. But is a real Mac worth an extra $3,000 to you? For some people, it will be. For most, probably not. Take some of that money you saved and sign up for Dashlane. Last week, tens of millions of passwords were exposed thanks to a Facebook hack. Maybe even yours. I'm the meat chef. That sucks for a lot of people who use the same password for Facebook as they do for their bank and, well, anything else. It's not sustainable and it isn't secure. Thanks to Dashlane, all 380 of my online accounts are secured with unique passwords that are only ever used once. And they autofill every single time I visit a website or open an app. 
The security dashboard even notifies me of new security breaches on websites where I have accounts. And I can even auto change passwords at the click of a button right in Dashlane. A new feature even checks the dark web to see if your private data is being bought and sold online. NCIX customers, <laughs> you may want to check that out. Viewers of Snazzy Labs can sign up for a free account at dashlane.com slash snazzylabs. And when you decide to upgrade to Dashlane Premium, you can save 10% at checkout by using the code snazzylabs. Well, folks, that's all for me. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, well, that other button works okay too. Get subscribed for more awesome videos like these, but most importantly, and as always, stay snazzy.